For experiment three, we are going to be doing a separation of organic compounds by acid-base extraction techniques. Some key points to this experiment is a separation or purification technique. A couple examples of these techniques are recrystallization, chromatography, and extraction. You have done recrystallization and chromatography in previous labs, so you should have an understanding of these um, procedures. In this lab, we're going to be doing an extraction experiment. Another key point is noticing the two immiscible phases, which such as oil and water. In this experiment, we are going to be going over the extraction technique. We're going to be doing a liquid-liquid extraction, which is one of the most common methods for removing an organic compound from a mixture. Um, some rules about the extraction technique, there's five main rules. The first is the solvent must not react. This way we can ensure that we can separate the compounds readily. The second rule is the solvent must be immiscible. We must be able to see an obvious difference between the two, between what we're separating. The third rule is the solvent must selectively remove the desired component. The fourth rule is the partition coefficient K of the desired component must be higher than the others. The fifth rule is the solvent should be readily separable. All five of these rules are very important for performing a liquid-liquid extraction experiment. In experiment three, again, we're going to be doing a separation of organic compounds by acid-base extraction techniques. In this experiment, you will be given a mixture of benzoic acid by 45%, three nitroaniline by 10%, and naphthalene by 45%. You will take this mixture, you'll take one gram of it, which is measured out by mass, and you will um, dissolve it in 40 milliliters of diethyl ether. Then you'll take this mixture and place it in a separata separatory funnel and make sure that the bottom is closed when you place the mixtures in there. The first step of this extraction is going to be an acidic, acidic separation. We will be using HCl to separate out the three nitroaniline compound, which is a base. The second step is a basic separation. We will be using NaOH to extract out the benzoic acid from the solution. In the first part of this experiment, we will be doing an acidic separation. We will be adding HCl into our mixture, which will protonate the nitroaniline. Once protonated, it is soluble in aqueous conditions. Then we will basify the compound, and then it will be returned to pure conditions, which are not soluble in water. In the first step, we add 15 milliliters of 4.5 molar HCl. Once we add this, we will shake the separatory funnel and invert it to release pressure. We will then extract the bottom aqueous layer. We will repeat this, um, ex we will repeat this procedure three different times with three different sets of 15 milliliters of HCl to ensure that all of the compound was protonated. In our, we can see um, in the separatory funnel, there is two different layers. The top layer is going to be our ether layer, which contains the benzoic acid and naphthalene. The bottom aqueous layer is going to contain our protonated nitroaniline. So once we separate the bottom layer out, Again, that just contains our compound two, which is up here, the protonated form. We will save that and perform experiments on it afterward. The separatory funnel contains our ether layer, which is our organic layer. After taking the aqueous layer and adding 15 milliliters of 4.5 molar NaOH, which then returns it back to the pure form, which is not soluble in water, we will see a precipitate form at the bottom of the flask. This precipitate, we will filter using vacuum filtration and then weigh it out and dry it. The second part of this experiment is going to be the basic separation. In this portion, we will be adding sodium hydroxide to benzoic acid to deprotonate the benzoic acid leading sodium benzoate, which is a salt. Sodium benzoate is soluble in water and that will create our aqueous layer that we can later filter out. After we create the sodium benzoate, 
we will acidify it using HCl, which will return it to the benzoic acid form, which is not soluble in water. As you can see down here, in our separatory funnel, we have our ether layer. We will then add 4.5 molar NaOH, 15 milliliters, and shake and close the separatory funnel. Once inverting and shaking multiple, multiple times, we will separate out the aqueous layer and leave the ether layer. We will then repeat this extraction two other times, which will ensure all of the benz sodium benzoate is created and separated out. After collecting our pool of sodium benzoate, we will acidify it with the HCl 4.5 molar, which will leave a precipitate at the bottom of our flask. We will then filter the, the precipitate out and dry the precipitate and weigh it to ensure that we got our compound using the hockey filtration. This is an overview of what we'll, we will be using in this experiment. Here we have our benzoic acid, NAP, phthalene, and 3-nitroaniline solution. This is a solid. We will be measuring out one gram of this and separating. Here we have our diethyl ether. Here we have our 4.5 molar Na NaOH. Here we have our 4.5 molar HCl. This is a bin that we will be getting from the lab stockroom. If you open it, you can see all of the different materials and glassware we will be needing for this experiment. First, we have our separatory funnel, 125 milliliters. To ins this means that it's open, and to close it is to put it perpendicular. We have our glassware, we have our beaker, we have Erlenmeyer flasks, two of them. We have a flask, flask used for the vacuum filtration. We have two wash glasses, stir bar mixture a flask for vacuum filtration, and a graduated cylinder for measuring out our solvents. Yeah, this is uh, our Buchner funnel, and here we have our spatula. So, and then we have, this is used to attach on a poppet to measure out the solvents. So let's start our experiment now. So let's start our experiment. <laughs> to use the balance, first make sure that it is 0, 0.00 grams to ensure that there is no other dust or molecules on the balance. Open the glass sliding doors and place the boat onto the balance in the center. We will then tar out the, the boat to ensure that we're just getting the compound. Open again the glass doors and then we will weigh out one gram of our mixture. Oh, you need more. <laughs> Look like light compound. Yeah, this is good idea, adding slow, rather than adding too much. A little bit more. That's it. And there we go. So we have 1.005 gram. So now we will write our number down and record it to the third decimal place. And we will first add our gram of our mixture into this beaker. Then we will take 40 milliliters of diethyl ether in our graduated, our graduated cylinder and pour it into the beaker. This should dissolve. Use your mix bar. Yeah, you can use spatula. 
spatula to stir the mixture. Oh, you can use chicken. Now that we can see that our compound is dissolved in the ether, we will take our separatory funnel and place it in the ring stand. We will make sure that it is closed before starting the experiment. Open the glass stopper and pour our solution into the, into the funnel. We will then add 15 milliliters of 4.5 molar HCl, which we have already weighed out in the cylinder. You can already see the immiscible phases beginning to form. Close it. Take the separatory funnel out. Very careful here. Make sure it's closed. And then you will shake it. And then turn it over to vent. Venting is very important so you don't cause an explosion. It's open, close, shake. Make sure you always open it away from you or other people. Close. And place it back into the ring stand. But now we wait for the phases to form. Yeah, now we have to open it. And then wait for a couple of minutes to see the two layers. So now we can have we can see the two layers have separated and we will be collecting the aqueous layer. So this uh, here is the two line face. Bottom is aqueous, top is ether layer. So now making sure that the separatory funnel is secure, we will open the stop clock. And open gently so that you can collect only and watch very closely to yeah, ensure keep your eye on the mucus layer Check. so this was the first extraction and now we will add another 15 milliliters of HCl 4.5 molar and do the process again So now we have added 15 ml second um, SCL. So now we are going to extract second time. So always close the cap first. Remove your separate from the very gently. And it would be better hold your separate funnel like this one through the palm like this upside down. Release the vacuum, release the pressure first. Close it and shake like this one. So you should be away from the iron ring, otherwise it could you could hurt or your separate funnel could broke. And once you shake it, release the vacuum, release this pressure and shake it again. Open it one more time. So now you can see you have seen two different types of shaking. Once you, you place it separately for now, open it again. If it will not open, two layer will not separate. So now we have to wait two minutes to see the two different layer. This is aqueous layer will be at the bottom and organic layer or ether layer will be on the top. 
after you have done all three extractions, you will get 45 milliliters of aqueous HCl layer. Yeah, which is around 45 ml. As you can see on the label. Make sure to label the flask so you don't get them mixed up. Now we will place this flask into our ice bath and cool it down so the precipitate will form. Once we neutralize the we start precipitating. What about this ether layer? This ether layer contains our benzoic acid and our naphthalene compounds. Which is for basic separation. Then we will add 15 milliliters of 4.5 molar NaOH and this will basify this solution. So this is second extraction, basic extraction. Now we will close the stop, the top, take the separatory funnel out, shake and vent it. and then place it back on the ring stand and take the top off to allow the layers to form. Wait for two minutes. Two to three minutes to separate the two layers. So this is our first extraction. We can see the two layers have formed into immiscible layers. We will begin to release the aqueous layer and then slow it down once it gets close. All right. So now we just have our top organic layer. We will then add another 15 milliliters of 4.5 molar NOH. This is our second extraction. And we will again close it shake it, invent it. Close it, and then place it back into the ring stand. and then take the glass lid off and allow it to separate for about two to five minutes. This is our third extraction in our basic separation. You can see on the top our organic layer and the bottom our aqueous layer. So this is our third extraction. We have 45 ml in each layer, approximately 50 to sign. So now we will take this flask, label it basic aqueous, and place it into our ice bath. Then this ether layer can be thrown into uh, organic waste. Now we can throw this one.